Welcome back or welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be giving y'all the detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this viral trendy beaded top. Keep in mind, I didn't have a tutorial to go off of myself. So this video is really trial and error. And I did show all of my mistakes or things I could have done differently or an easier way to do certain things as I went because again there was no detailed tutorial or one that was really helpful to me which is why I'm making one for y'all. I showed two different ways so just bear with me but the first time I saw this top was on Des Dior and she got hers from the brand Je Suis Janice. I think this is the brand that like kind of blew up I believe if I'm not mistaken but their tops run from $800 to $1,500 and there was no way I was spending that type of money on a top I probably wasn't even going to wear more than once or twice so yeah here comes little Miss Dua herself their tops are beautiful though but there's just no way so the first thing you're going to want to do obviously is come up with your color scheme whatever vibe you're going for I knew I wanted to do red because that's my birthstone color ruby um and this top was for my birthday so i was all up in the reds i got most of my beads from joanne this is where i'm at right now i got most of my beads from here and i also picked out some clear beads that i wanted to add like just here and there um more so for the little dangly pieces that hang off the top i ended up going with these ones right here they were perfect for that but yeah that's what i got here and luckily these beads were on sale because i got $226 off and I'm gonna pay uh, roughly $136 for all my beads. Mm-hmm, yeah. So next I ended up going to Michael's to get a few things. I went to a couple craft stores just to see you the bead options, but here I mainly got these pliers. I got this set of five that comes with five different pliers um, to make my top with. And then I also came for the chain, obviously for the base of the top. I didn't end up going with this, I bought it, but I ended up not using it because I don't like that color. I'll show y'all the one I ended up getting, but I got these lobster clasps and these jump rings right here from Michaels as well. And I also got my illusion cord. This is the one I ended up going with. This is what you're gonna string your beads on. I spent roughly $43 at Michaels. And then I also went to Hobby Lobby. I got a few beads from there and I also got the chain in the color I wanted, the shade of gold that I wanted instead of the one from Michaels. I didn't like that shade. And then I also got some head pins that I forgot to show. I spent about $36 on Hobby Lobby. I also got some crimp beads or crimp tubes in the crimp tool from Walmart. And I spent about $10 there. So in total, I roughly spent about $226 on all of my supplies to make the top. These are all my beads. I have removed them from the strings and everything. So let's get to it. So first things first, I started out with the base. Now this is where I didn't even know what I was doing. I just needed something to work with. I just needed something to see or the shape of the base or something. I wasn't even thinking about measuring or anything, but I will explain to y'all later on how I should have done this part, but I'm just finna explain right now how I ended up doing it to begin with. And then I'll explain the correct way. That's probably a little bit easier. So basically I just took some of that chain and I used those pink pliers in that pack of five of the jewelry tools, um, the curved looking pliers to open up the links on the chain. And I ended up just hooking this around the shoulder part just so I could see a strap or visualize a strap for the top and something to connect the beads to. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna give these chains names so I can follow me a little bit better or label them. Um, I'm going to add a lobster clasp to the end of this to hook it to itself so I could tighten it, tighten the straps if I needed to or loosen them. That's basically how I was thinking. But anyway, I'm going to label these chains. So the chain on the left is going to be chain A1, chain on the right is going to be chain A2. Okay, so these are the straps for the top. So now I'm adding, we'll call this chain B. This is the chain that's going to go under the bust basically where your underwire would sit in your bra and again i added lobster clasps to each end of this chain to hook it to chain a1 and chain a2 so yeah and i'm just using these pliers to open up the link to add on a lobster clasp and then hook it to chain a1 you see so yeah now i'm going to explain to you how i should have done this part and what would make a little bit more sense in just a second but i'm just showing y'all what i have right now so this is what it looks like from the side, from the front, and the back. So this is what it's looking like. I ended up connecting these two right here also. I added a lobster clasp to the end of this and ended up hooking it to the other side on the right. 
you can see me doing right here. Before I explain to y'all the correct way I should have did this, I'm adding chain C now is what we'll call this one. This is the chain that's going to go in the middle, in between your bahubis, right down the center of the chest, okay? This is chain C. Now I added another chain to this to be able to hook it around the neck, like a necklace as you see me doing right here with a lobster clasp. And this isn't gonna stay here. This is gonna be removed from there up where my finger was. Um, I'm just using this as a guide for right now. You will see that we will remove that later and it will end up being a string of beads. But you'll see later. Just stay with me. Stay with me. So another thing you can do is add your bra to your mannequin. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned if you needed a mannequin, but I won't say you just need one, but it definitely makes it easier. Anywho, I'm taking some of these pins and marking where the cup of my bra stops and the straps start. So you can see how many rows of beads you need to add in order to have enough coverage you get what I'm saying so from this point down will be beads okay so here I'm just counting the links in chain B to make sure that chain C is centered I'm just counting them on each side to make sure it's in the center that's all now I've been explaining to y'all an easier way you could have made your base so what I figured out is I could just measure around right up under my bus measure around myself and then that would have been the length of my chain and then add on a few inches just to be able to tighten it or loosen it if i need to and then i would have hooked that in the back with a lobster clasp right around this area right here where these red dots are so that would have been where chain b would be and it would just connect in the back and then for the straps you would just add those connect chain a1 and a2 to chain b so again you would hook one end of chain a1 to the front side of chain b and then the other end of chain a1 or a2 to the back side of chain b so those would be your straps or you can do what i did which i ended up doing this when i finished the top um and just hook chain a1 and a2 around the neck like halter top style instead of spaghetti strap it's up to you though whichever you want to do but i like the halter neck type of style so that's what i did i ended up hooking mine behind the neck at the end okay now that the base is out of the way let's move on to adding these beads on so i did this two different ways um this way took way longer the second way that i will show you later is way faster and probably made a lot more sense anywho i'm going to show you how to make your string of beads and you see we have jump rings on each end in order to connect it to the top so i'm just taking my pink pliers and my white pliers the white ones are the little skinny needle nose looking ones the pink ones are the little curve looking pliers to open up the jump ring and hook it to chain c one end to chain c and the other end to chain a1 and then you would do the same thing on the opposite side but obviously before we do all of that i need to show you how to make the string of beads dur so Obviously, you're going to want to measure from the center of your chest to your side or like under your armpit across the bust area to that point. So you can see where these red dots are. That's where you need to measure so you'll know how long your string of beads need to be. And then add a few inches to that, like six or seven inches so you have room to tie knots with your string. And then the first thing you want to do is add your crimp tube to your string and then add a jump ring to the string. Now you are going to take your string and loop it over the jump ring, not through the jump ring, but over it, you see me doing here, and put the string back through the crimp tube, okay, and then pull that tight. I don't know much about crimp tubes, this is my first time working with them, but it's supposed to be like extra security. Even still with the crimp tubes, I did tie knots because I did have a couple of mine slip with just the crimp tube by itself but yeah again i don't know anything about crimp tubes but i'm assuming they just provide extra security but this is what you should look like at this point and you're going to now crimp your crimp tube onto your string so you're going to need the crimp tool um, again i got the crimp tubes and the tool from walmart so you see the part that's shaped like a u and then there's another part that's just shaped like a little hole. So you're gonna put the crimp tube through the U-shaped part first, crimp it there, 
and then crimp it again in the little hole shaped part to close it off. I don't know. I barely know how to use a crimp tube myself. This is my first time using one. I don't know. That's just what I did. So yeah, you see me crimping it in the u shape part and then here we go crimping it again to close it in the smaller hole. So hopefully y'all are following me there. So that's what it should look like at this point. It's all crimped on there. It shouldn't go anywhere. But again, I had a couple of mine slip, so I am tying a knot. So I did tie one knot you see here, and then I will tie one more. I also like to take the pliers to grab it and pull it to make sure that that knot is tight and it's not going anywhere. So this is where we are now. And now you can just start stringing on your beads. When you do this part, make sure you are feeding the short little piece of the string through the beads as well, so that's not showing. But you're just gonna keep adding beads until you've got the length that you need in order to cover the area. This isn't the length of my beads, but I'm just showing y'all this for example purposes to show y'all how I strung the beads. But once you've added all your beads, you're going to add another crimp bead and add another jump ring and do the same thing. Loop your string over the jump ring and through the crimp tube, pull it tight. And then of course you have to crimp again, crimp your crimp tube and tie your knots again, which you will see me do. It's a little bit harder to tie the knot this way because you're gonna have to wrap it around your finger and do the whole loop-de-doo, you know. But yeah, I tie two knots here as well. So it's not going anywhere. Now that that's done, you are going to feed the end of that string back through the beads. You don't have to feed it through the whole string of beads, just a few of them. And you will see where it comes out on mine. I just did like three or four beads and you see it come out at the end right there and pull it through and then you'll cut your string right there. You just want to leave a little bit of extra string. You don't want to just cut it right where you knotted at, you know? So now that you've done that, this is what you should look like. You should have two ends with jump rings and you'll be able to hook it onto your top now. So again, like you saw me doing earlier, you're gonna hook one end to that outside chain, chain A1 or chain A2, and hook the other end to chain C, that center chain. And you're gonna keep doing that all the way up the top until you are fully covered, all the way up until you get to those pins where we marked before. Now you're going to make another string of beads that's a bit longer and you're going to add some chain onto the end of that as you can see and you will hook that to that top link right where your last row of beads are. So that'll be the part that hooks around your neck that's why you add the chain to the ends and you're going to add a lobster clasp to one of those strings of beads in order to hook it around your neck in the back. So you've got chain on the ends of both of those strings of beads. One of them just has a lobster clasp on the end of that chain. That makes sense. And I'm just pinning them here for now because I hadn't added my lobster clasp yet at this point. So y'all could see where I removed the rest of chain C. So you see we didn't really need that part. It was just for, you know, a guide. So you see this center part right here where the chain was kind of exposed. I just made another string of beads and added it there with jump rings on each end. But this is where I realized it just got to be a better way to do this because most of the other tops I saw, you didn't have all that chain exposed in the middle. So here I am taking the whole thing apart because I just cannot let myself rest knowing that there was a better and more efficient way I could have done this and the top would probably look better in the end too. So I took it all apart. Yes, ma'am, I did. But good for y'all because now y'all see what and what not to do. So because I was doing two strings of beads, one on each side, one on for each boob. I had 38 strings of beads. This way, I only needed 19 strings of beads because I just did one long string of beads instead of splitting them down the middle and making them two separate ones on each side. This cut the time in half if I had done this the first time. So, 
what I did is I measured from armpit to armpit instead of center of chest to armpit and then that's the length of my beads plus a few inches like I said so you'll be able to tie your knots and then I just added links from the chain in the center of each of these and then we'll connect them all together and I'll explain how I did that because you don't connect them to each one so what you do is you see how I've got some connected already so I'm going to show you I connected two at a time pretty much and then added another jump ring in between so you see all these are connected so I have two strings of beads connected to the link that's already on that string of beads and then I added an extra link in between every two does that make sense I feel like I'm overcomplicating it but I just want y'all to understand so basically every two strings of beads connected is connected to another two strands of beads by another link why do I feel like I'm saying it crazy where it's not making sense? Basically, it's two strands connected, jump ring. Two more strands connected, jump ring. Or a chain link. I really hope y'all are following me. But now that I've connected them all, this is what it looks like. So now we're going to take it and connect that center link at the very top of the row of beads to the link that's connecting the strands that go around the neck. I hope y'all are following. And then you're just going to connect each one to chain A1 and the other side to chain A2. And I'm just putting a scrunchie around them just to keep them separated, each side separated. They ended up falling off later, so it didn't even matter. But yeah, I'm just taking each one, starting from the very bottom row of beads and connecting it to chain A1. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And by the way, I'm starting connecting the rows of beads to the very first link above where chain B is connected. So the very first link on A1 that's connected to chain B is where I'm starting, right above it. And then you'll just keep going up from there, connecting the next one to the link above that, the next one to the link above that. I'm not skipping any links in between, I'm just going straight up to the next one. I really hope I'm doing a good job explaining this so far, at least the way that I did it, I don't know. I mean, this is what happens when you don't have a tutorial to go off of yourself because everybody wants to gatekeep and not show you how to make these tops. But I'm trying. I'm trying to explain. I'm not that good at explaining things, I feel like, because I feel like I make it more complicated than it really is. And then I just overcomplicate my explanations and then I just make people even more confused. I don't know. Hopefully y'all are following though and hopefully it helps. If you do have tips on how to actually do this or like better ways to go about it, please feel free to comment. I'm not opposed to that because, yeah. The second way that I did it definitely helped me because it cut my time in half. I spent like, what, 19 hours on it the first time, the first way I did it. This way that I did it the second time, it took me half that. It took me like eight or nine hours. So if there's an even faster way, go ahead and put the girlies on. But yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this until all of the strands are connected to chain A1 on the left side and then we'll go to the right side and do the same thing because what we do to one side we must do to the other and then I'll get into showing y'all how to add on the dangly pieces we're almost done that's the last part I swear and that part is really optional you don't even have to do that I just think it adds a little something to it you can add dangles you can add whatever you want to add however you want to jazz it up you know do your thing but yeah I'm just gonna let y'all watch me do this and then we'll get into that I'm not completely new to like jewelry making type of stuff either which is why I kind of had like an idea on how to guess how to do this or like you know come up with some type of way to make this myself going off of no tutorial um I used to make jewelry in middle school I used to make and sell jewelry in middle school so I kind of knew about some of these tools and some of the supplies that I used um, I used to stay in Joann's when I was in middle school, girl. And our jewelry was cute too, girl. I was making it with my twin sister. It was called Twin Jewels. So now I'm going in and connecting that top link in the center of the strand of beads to the link that's connecting the two strand of beads that go around the neck. I just had it pinned there before, I believe. I didn't even notice that just a second ago. But yeah, you see me connecting them here. And then I'm going to connect chain B to that bottom link in the center of the strand of beads or chain c is what it was before but yeah and now we are here you can either leave it like this or move on to this step which is adding the dangles so i'm taking these head pins you see the head on the end that keeps your beads from falling off so i just connect it by a jump ring and then we're going to add it to the top again i'm using the skinny needle nose pliers the white ones and the pink ones with the rounded 
and to add it on to open up the jump ring and close it back. These are really the only two pliers I use out that pack other than the wire cutters, which I'm about to use in a second. But let me show y'all how to make a dangle. So you're gonna take your head pin, mine are gold because my chain is gold, so everything matches. And you're just gonna add your beads to it. Um, your beads should not go anywhere as long as the hole in your beads is not bigger than the size of the head pin. So you're just gonna add on your beads and then at the end you're going to bend with the needle nose pliers and then curve it back and close it so you're just making a loop if that makes sense with your needle nose pliers so that you can add a jump ring to it to connect it to your top you can see so yeah that's basically how you make one of these it's real simple i'm also going to show y'all how to make a longer dangle if you want to do that because you know these head pins are always so long and i also take my pliers and pinch it close just to make sure it doesn't open back up but yeah, you just add on your jump ring, like I said, and then just connect it to chain B on your top and you can add as many as you want. Now, if you want to extend it a little bit, they do make head pins that aren't heads on the end. They're loops on the end, like the loops we made to close it off just a second ago. They make some where the ends are already like that. So if you bought those, then that'll work better than this. But you could just cut the head off of the head pin like I did with the wire cutters and then just make you a loop on the end like we did before and then just add you on some more beads and connect that to the one you just made and then that'll give you a longer one or you could just buy wire that's long enough to make a super long one and just make loops on both ends whatever works for you so yeah you can connect them to each other with a jump ring and it'll be like two dangles in one or you can just keep them separate and add them to the top that way whatever you want to do i had a couple that i had to add a little extra length to so again here i am adding them to the top adding them to chain b with a jump ring and i'm just spacing them out however i didn't really count like how many links I went over before I added another one. I just kind of added where it looked right. But if you want it to be like evenly spaced, you can of course count out the amount of links in between each dangle if you want to do that. But I did that all the way across on each side. And yeah, I think it turned out really cute. I like the little dangles. I think it gives it something really nice. And that's what it looks like on the other side. And that is the complete top. And you see how doing it this way, the second way, by doing one long strand of beads, eliminate that gap in the middle of all that chain showing. Yeah, so I definitely recommend the second way, but I mean, whatever you wanna do. So again, you can wear it like this and connect it in the back with chain B with the lobster clasp. Of course, it's gonna stay connected there anyway, but I also took the straps of chain A1 and A2 and connected them around my neck like halter style. You could wear it that way too. But again, when we made the straps for chain A1 and A2, you know, we added lobster clasps to those. So you can tighten those to make sure that your straps don't fall off or go anywhere if you choose to leave the straps spaghetti strap style. But yeah, y'all, that is it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. I hope it was helpful. I hope it made sense. I hope I did a good job explaining. If I didn't, please don't beat me up. But if you have any tips on how to better make this top or an easier way to explain it, or if you have any questions at all, let me know in the comment section below and I will be sure to answer them. I feel like I kind of ate it up though. I don't know though. That's just me. That's just me. Little Miss Do It Herself strikes again. But that's it for this video. You guys hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.